Hello, I'm Reginald Eggleston, Superintendent of Gary County Schools, USD 475. And today I have with me a special guest, Mr. Dave Weil, our Chief Operations Officer. Glad to have you, Mr. Weil, with us today. Thank you for having me here today, Dr. Eggleston. So, Mr. Weil, your department oversees so many facets of the operations when it comes to our school district. Could you kind of give us a little idea of what that touches when it comes to the operation side? Sure, I can give you a quick overview uh, for our viewers benefit. Look at operations as the support element that supports all the teaching and learning that occurs in the inside the classroom. And it includes uh, our transportation programs to include at a bus coordination and the bus contractors purchasing, warehousing, print plant operations. Uh, we've got a child nutrition, nutrition program, safety and security, which includes and encompasses now our COVID mitigation and all of the, that goes with that, the safety and security, construction programs, facilities, maintenance and repair, uh, energy conservation, custodial work, uh, building maintenance, grounds maintenance, it's a, it's a total package. Well, I think a lot of times viewers and others may not take in consideration all that happens behind the scene in order to keep 18 facilities up and running. Uh, we are a school district with 7,000 students and 1,300 employees, so we have to ensure we have facilities that can ensure the safety of our students, the services as far as meals, uh, and as well as that a quality academic or learning environment is in place. So that is so important. Well, Mr. Wild, you have been very instrumental and I do want to personally say thank you for your leadership and everything surrounding and dealing with the, the building of the new high school. I know we've had a um, ribbon cutting and I know that was an emotional moment, I'm sure for you. So tell me a little bit about what your thoughts were during that moment. Well, it, it, thank you, Dr. Eggleston, number one. And it was a time to reflect and, and no fact, to, to look back on it, it, it really is a process that started about two decades ago with then superintendent, Dr. Mary Devon, when she challenged uh, her staff and come up with a new means for delivering curriculum to students so that we can improve test scores. At that time, Greg Springston was the principal of the high school and he and his staff began to look at various models of delivery of information. My wife served on that committee as a department head at the time. And uh, they came up with the academy structure is what they settled upon. And you well know now that that academy structure down through time began to drive uh, the need for a facility that accommodated that school within a school environment. And we went through, of course, uh, Superintendent Ron Walker and Dr. Witt, and, and now yourself, Beth Hudson, served in there on an interim basis. And all the support staff that were involved, uh, we had the, the, the boards of education, of course, we had a, a community effort of 50 individuals in the community steering committee that did work with the study and then came back to the board of education and made its recommendation. And that recommendation was a new facility on a new site that morphed into the say yes campaign that was highly effective in getting the bond campaign passed. So it, 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 brought forward and and I want you to to understand or our viewers to understand this this took a lot of people to make it happen and I just happened to be another face in that mixture I just happened to be here at the end of the process well you kind of lead you're leading into my next question when you talk about the planning the long range planning and looking forward we have a six year facilities plan and in that plan it gives us an idea to prioritize or an opportunity to prioritize as well as uh, determine what the next uh, facilities goal will be. Can you elaborate a little bit on that? Yes, sir. The six year master plan is our roadmap. That's our guide for how we uh, resource as far as facilities are concerned, every school in the district and how we place our money as a priority, what projects are next. Very excited that I've had an opportunity now to meet with your staff and reconsidering its programming needs across the district. I think we're gonna go into a whole new direction. It then tells me and my staff, what facilities are a priority, what direction, what programs are gonna be emerging priorities. And we can then funnel and channel all of our resources into those programs. I'm looking forward to already working with Mr. Troy Hurdle with SJCF on rebuilding that master plan 
and coming up with a whole new six-year plan. Okay, and when you talk about working with staff, you're alluding to our teaching and learning department because they really set the tone for programmatic priorities and so those programs that they are emphasizing will have an impact on your plan. That is absolutely correct. As I've mentioned, operations is the support element of the district. Teaching and learning is the primary focus and when they establish and clearly articulate their needs, that tells me and my entire staff where to direct our energies and resources. So Mr. Wow, what's now on the radar for the school district? The, of course, the, the primary focus will continue to be the high school. We will continue to go through uh, completion of construction there. Of course, uh, the punch list, I imagine that is going to continue for several months. The Hutton Construction typically stays with this job for a very long time in order to make sure we're completely satisfied with the product. But we've also now shifted our attention to that new elementary school out at at Fort Riley, uh, the schematic design is complete. The floor plans is complete. We've now gone into final design and construction document generation. We're actually issuing out the steel package now. There's a 10 month de delay on the delivery of steel. We hope to start construction next summer. So that steel has to be time to start arriving. That's an exciting development. We'll have our routine summer work that we'll start scheduling next year. That's We've got three schools we're gonna focus where we'll build instructional walls and classrooms, hang new smart boards and those kind of things. And you've got your regular routine uh, repair and maintenance stuff that's gonna occur across the district. That, but another exciting development that you're aware of, Dr. Eggleston, is our safety and security program. Uh, we're going to look at building a master command and control center at the new high school. During the COVID summer of 2020, that gave us an opportunity to install cameras in every school across the district. Now we want to build a platform that allows us to have a camp command and control center in a centralized location where we can watch the, the functions and operations of every school in the district from one location and uh, work in partnership with law enforcement and first responders all the things necessary to ensure a safe learning environment. No, that's outstanding right there. I know that the safety and security piece is a priority for our district as well as districts across the state and the nation. So for us to have a command and control center that can view and monitor and, and, and look over that is gonna be very critical and crucial as we move forward. Well, I wanna say thank you for what you and your department do. Uh, the support that you provide is excellent. I know that the teachers and students out there appreciate all that you do. And so to our viewers, uh, I just wanna say thank you as well for your support. Uh, Mr. Wild and his team do an outstanding job. And so uh, again, today we wanted to feature Mr. Wild, our Chief Operations Officer and his department for everything that they do. So to our viewers, thank you for your support. Thank you for being with us again. We'll see you same place, same time next week.